It's hard to imagine that during World War II, training bases were sprouting up all over the state of Tennessee. Rob Wiles takes us to the site of one in the town of Halls, a place that for three years was home to aspiring bomber crews. This is Halls. It's an agricultural center in West Tennessee. In fact, you can hear the sounds of commerce going on here this morning. Back in 1942, though, this was a very different place. America was at war, locked in a life and death struggle. And on this site, you would have heard the sounds of magnificent machines and the magnificent men who were learning how to fly them. The B-17, the plane that would help bring the Nazis to their knees. But the sounds of those machines, of the men themselves are gone, but not forgotten. These are uh, the uh, jackets worn by the pilots. And uh, this one we're very proud of because each uh, base, uh, military base at the time, had a uh, base emblem. And this is a Tennessee Bobcat on a bomb. That was a base emblem for the Dyersburg Army uh, Air Base. Dale McCaslin knows all about this place, once known as the Dyersburg Army Air Base, even though it's really in halls. He grew up very close by and as a kid watched the big B-17s rumble into the sky. Growing up on a farm near the Mississippi River, uh, there was low-level flying aircraft, and uh, at times, as a small boy, uh, one of our hobbies was standing out in the, uh, maybe the front yard, counting the number of aircraft that flew over. Now, retired and returned home to Halls, Dale volunteers at the Veterans Museum here. It's really a passion. I enjoy it. It's uh, the opportunity to, uh, to perpetuate uh, living history. Uh, it's just a, it's really a joy to uh, walk around and uh, talk about the history and uh, most people that enter the museum are really amazed at the number of artifacts that we have in such a small town uh, museum. It's turned into a hobby and it slowly turned into a passion. The museum is a passion for lots of people, particularly those who, museum director Pat Higdon says, donated the treasures to this place. Mainly they love the part about uh, the base's history and how big this facility is. The concrete is still here so they can get the massiveness of it. And when we tell them that 7,700 crewmen trained here and 114 were killed in air crashes, that's very impressive to them. Plus we have art from the era that was painted here on the base. And then you see the military vehicles that we have that um, were all in World War II except one Korean war jeep. Well, the Norden bomb site was the most highly developed bomb site we had during World War II, and it was uh, way ahead of its time. Precision high altitude bombing is the, is the sign. Every day after a training mission here on the base, they would take them out of the B-17s and put them under lock and key 24-7 in those storage vaults. Visitors get a look at the equipment, of course, but they also get a look at what the place was like during the time the base was open. Volunteer Helen Bell says most all the visitors have a very personal interest in what happened here and the time in which it happened. A lot of the wives have come back and want to see, you know, where their husband was, was serving. It, it's really interesting, the folks you, you get. We had a group in from Chicago last week and the average age was probably 80 and they were more fun but they you know a lot of now they didn't serve on this base but they wanted to know all about it they knew about b-17s pat higdon says the visitors include those who remember this place as it was and those who treasure the men who trained here well they come back all the time and basically what they talk about is how friendly the people were and uh, about how everybody embraced them and didn't charge them too much money to to do things in this area mm -hmm. and they they really enjoy their stay here we have have them come back all the time and now they come back with their children and grandchildren now this is a bombay right here a couple of decades ago a reunion was held here on the base where planes and men who both knew world war ii quite personally took a sentimental journey it was a reunion that the passage of time will make impossible to duplicate as the men and women who were stationed and worked here pass on. And it's for all of them whose faces are forever young and hopeful in the photos here 
And for us too, that volunteer Betty Lovelace says this Veterans Museum is an important place. So people don't forget what everybody has been through. We need to remember the history, not only World War II, but the other wars also. Wars that change us, just as World War II changed this area and made farmland into a massive training base, a base now memorialized at the Veterans Museum in Halls.